a dogfight in Toronto, Colin Clark's fate handed down, and fantasy advice before the weekend, next on The Daily. Welcome to The Daily. It is Thursday, March 29th. I'm Andrew Wiebe, next to Jason Seguini. And Jason, the big story today, CCL action, Toronto FC, the last remaining MLS side, taking on Santos Laguna at BMO Field last night. A 1-1 draw for the Reds. Hercules Gomez once again getting another goal. Miguel Aceval evening it up, but uh, handicap this performance for Toronto C. Is this what they needed to go into that second leg with a fighting chance? Well, I mean, when you look at what they've done in MLS play, they haven't looked very good. So this was probably about as good as you could expect against a very good Santos team. That said, Santos played this game without some of their big guns. You're expecting something similar to what happened when they played Seattle. They went back down to Mexico, they brought out the big guns, and they were able to handle Seattle easily. That said, for me, Toronto FC, they showed they have a puncher's chance. I mean, they're going to go down to Mexico. They could get an early goal. They could get uh, Santos flustered. We saw at the end of this match that, you know, uh, Santos players got a little hot-headed. Key play here was Darwin Quintero getting a red card. He's one of their most dangerous players in the attack. That said, they do have some other guys to bring off the bench down in Mexico. Yeah, and one guy who should be around after being removed with injury is Hercules Gomez. Scored another goal, his ninth and seven games on just on fire right now for that squad. You, know, you talked about Darwin Quintero and him being out. On the other side, Toronto FC going to be without both of their big guns and Torsten Frings and Danny Kovermans mm -hmm. after Corbin gets that yellow. How much is that going to affect the team and, and do they have a chance with those guys out? Yeah, I mean, they played this game without Joao Plata in the starting lineup, so you kind of figure Ryan Johnson goes up to that target spot, Joao Plata comes into the game. When he came in, he was exciting. He caused a little uh, pro you know, problems for the defense for Santos. Again, that said, it's going to be a different game in Mexico, so Toronto is going to struggle, I think, to get a hold of the ball down there. They're really going to have to take advantage of their counterattacks. Check in on MLSsoccer.com for Hercules Gomez's comments about the match. And, of course, April 4th in Torreon, Mexico, these two teams will meet again for a spot in the Champions League Finals. More big news that people were waiting for yesterday. Colin Clark received a suspension from MLS for that homophobic slur that he leveled at a ball boy in that Seattle game. Obviously apologized right after, but MLS comes down with a three-game suspension, sensitivity training, and a fine. Jason, a lot of discussions across the internet and just league-wide about this. Do you think it was appropriate? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a statement. We talked a little bit about it on Extra Time Radio last week. Uh, you know, the league had to make a statement here. They want to be one of the more progressive leagues when it comes to this stuff. And that was basically what happened. And you can read, I mean, the comments from the league, the comments from the Dynamo, the comments from Clark. Pretty much everyone is on the same page now and understands that this is what had to be done. Along those lines, Jason, you and the guys will have David Testo, a former Montreal Impact and Columbus Crew player, who revealed his sexual orientation earlier in the preseason on the show to discuss the Colin Clark situation and the effect on the league. You can catch that on the site this afternoon. And last but not least, a little fantasy advice before the weekend begins. Jason, you and I having pretty good years so far, still early. But uh, give me your two picks here. Who, who's to look out for? Well, I'm going to take a look at the goalkeeping situation, especially in D.C. and Chicago, where Bill Hamid and Sean Johnson returned from their Olympic disappointment. Remember, Bill Hamid, injured ankle, not likely to get back into the lineup right away for D.C. So you can still look at Joe Willis as an option, only $4.5 million. And a similarly priced goalkeeper out in Chicago, Paulo Tornagi, he will not be replaced by Sean Johnson just yet. Head coach Frank Klopas saying he wants Johnson to get some reps. He wants to see him in action. Tornagi's been playing great. So that's two goalkeepers you can get for only $4.5 million. Very good bargains. Yeah, and on the offensive side, a bargain to take a look at. Casey Townsend, Chivas USA rookie who came in and scored that opportunistic winner against RSL. Only $6 million, so if you need to fill in a blank right there, he's a good one. Then on a little more higher price than Kenny Cooper, $8 million. Yes, he's been inconsistent. Yes, he's been in and out of the lineup, but it appears he'll be there to stay at least for now. They play Montreal, a, a team in flux. So those are two to look at. Also on the site, as we mentioned, Extra Time Radio coming out this afternoon should be a great addition. And then Anatomy of a Goal with Greg Lawless breaking down Thierry Henry's uh, goal against Colorado on the weekend. All right, plenty of content on the site, especially now coming in from the West Coast. He mentioned Extra Time Radio, but also you can get March to the Match on the website. That's the new West Coast podcast. And another video to check out is Between the Lines, the armchair analyst Matt Doyle 
breaks down the Kansas City pressure, the high pressure that Kansas City plays. I know you're familiar with mm -hmm. it, uh, and how that helps them create goals. Yeah, very much so. They'll go for their fourth straight win this weekend, but that's all we have for the Daily. Check back tomorrow for all the previews of the weekend's action.